Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Bloodlines and Black Magic core rulebook. If you haven't seen the other parts of this review, featuring this modern occult adventures RPG experience, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about Universal Bloodline Abilities and Character Classes. Let's start with Bloodline Abilities. When the players are selecting Bloodline Abilities for their player characters, they may select from their character's Bloodline repertoire or from a pool of Universal Abilities. When a player character selects an ability from the pool of Universal Abilities, that ability replaces one of the two normally granted by the Bloodline. Let's talk about some of these Universal Abilities. You have Danger Sense. When you have a bad feeling about something, you are generally dead on. When you select this Bloodline ability, you have an advantage on dexterity saving throws against hazards, traps, or other effects that would otherwise harm you by catching you unaware. This Bloodline has two levels of attunement. At level 1, when you invest an attunement slot into Danger Sense, you automatically increase your passive perception and you also gain a bonus on all initiative checks. At level 2, you gain the ability to act in the surprise round, provided you are free to do so. Additionally, you get a bonus to all Pierce the Veil checks you make. There's also Healthy. You have always been healthy, avoiding or all but ignoring flu season and the common cold in ways others simply cannot fathom. You gain advantage on constitution saving throws to avoid the poisoned or nauseated condition. This bloodline has three levels of attunement. For example, at level 1, you gain 1d4 hit points and you gain immunity to the nauseated condition. And at level 3, you gain additional 1d4 hit points and you gain advantage on saving throws against the magical and mundane diseases. There's also sensitive. Your blood makes you naturally sensitive to the invisible world and the supernatural creatures that call it home. Whenever you are within 100 feet of something supernatural, be it a location, individual, magical effect or some other thing, the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you feel the air around you change. You cannot determine the direction or point of origin, however. This bloodline has two levels of attunement. At level 1, when you invest an attunement slot into sensitive, you learn how to sense the general direction and distance of things from the invisible world. You can sense portals and gates to the invisible world within 100 feet. But when you invest your second attunement slot into this bloodline ability, you learn the spell Locate Object, and Wisdom is your spellcasting ability score for it. If you do not possess a spellcasting class, you may cast this spell once a day. If you are a spellcaster, you instead add this spell to your spell list and gain a slot with which to cast it. Now let's talk about the character classes. In Bloodlines and Black Magic, your character class represents your overall interests, skills and strengths in the world. While most characters in Bloodlines and Black Magic develop these interests broadly, they tend to narrow their focus early on. Players select from the seven following classes. Brawler, Hunter, Occultist, Operative, Psychic, Spiritualist, or Witch. Let's talk a bit about each of these classes. The Brawler is the tough character who steps up and acts when violence becomes the only option to resolve a conflict. Trained to fight in any number of traditions or styles, Brawlers represent a wide array of physical combatants from the modern world. Then we have the Hunter. This is a martially minded character who uses the connection to nature to combat the unnatural things that creep across the invisible world. Able to sense nearby cryptids or other unnatural corporeal monsters, hunters use their connection to nature alongside a host of modern gadgets to track and defeat their quarry, no matter the terrain or environment. Then we have the occultist. The occultist is an academically minded hero who seeks the truth Living with one foot in the mundane world and one foot in the invisible world, the occultist uses their impressive knowledge, their ability to readily look into the invisible world, and their ability to execute complex spells and rituals to defeat far more powerful enemies. Next we have the operative. Trained from their youth to forward their chosen group's agenda, 
Operatives are the special field agents who tackle their organization's ongoing operational needs. Whether acting as spies, diplomats, or even assassins, operatives are the team leaders who use tactics, intelligence, and similar assets to complete their respective missions. Then we have the psychic. Born with the ability to sense the spaces beyond our normal perceptions, psychics in bloodlines and black magic are individuals whose strong connections to the astral plane can manifest limited power in the mundane world as a result. Working constantly to understand and nurture this connection, psychics use their extraordinary abilities to uncover secrets and learn truths in their communities. Next we have the spiritualist, able to sense the dead, hunts, and similar phenomena with strong connection to the ethereal plane. The spiritualist serves as a medium between the living and the dead, able to summon a powerful spiritual companion to aid them in the mundane world. The spiritualist spends a great deal of their lives listening to the whispering dead. And then we have the witch, born with a natural aptitude for alchemy, magic, and communicating with the Goetia. The witch is a powerful spellcaster who works closely with a familiar spirit often one that takes the form of a natural animal, to achieve their goals. While witches are powerful on their own, when three or more form a coven, their powers increase in kind, making them incredibly fierce foes. What I like of these character classes is that they all feel magical. Even the ones that are more martially inclined or a bit more physically oriented have these extraordinary powerful abilities that are not seen in other tabletop role-playing games that feature similar archetypes. So if you're the type of player that is constantly thinking of choosing this or that character class, but you still want some magic, you're looking more for like a Gish type of character class, one who is capable in melee and magic, then this role-playing game is going to get you out of that analysis paralysis because all of the character classes are magical. When it comes to single class characters, as you advance in your particular class, you unlock additional abilities and features. Unless you begin training in a second class, creating a dual class character, and we will talk about that in a few moments, you unlock your class primary features at levels 1, 3, and 5. Characters who reach level 7 in their primary class unlock its capstone ability, achieving the full scope of their legendary abilities. When it comes to dual class characters, you can start training in a second class, instantly becoming a dual class character and unlocking that second class's primary features. It gives you a much broader set of skills and abilities. When a player elects to do this, their character freezes all progress in the first class. They cannot advance in their primary class until they reach the equivalent level in their new class. Once they do, they may elect to advance their primary class again advancing either at their leisure until reaching a total of 7 levels. How that knowledge and those abilities are distributed depends on when the primary class is abandoned and the second selected. Characters who have reached 5th level in their primary class, for instance, can only advance to 2nd level in their 2nd class. Characters looking for an optimal split should consider selecting their 2nd class at lower levels if they are concerned with attaining their new class's mid-level powers and abilities. Game masters and players should both take note that a character cannot train in more than two classes. Moreover, a character who elects to train in a second class can never gain either class's capstone ability. Now, when it comes to levels of play, these are divided in three tiers. Heroic level play, legendary level play, and mythic level play. Each of these levels of play correspond with differing areas of the world of bloodlines and black magic as well. Heroic level of play ranges from level 1 to 7. This level of play is the gritty, dark introduction into the world as it really exists. Characters at this level of play primarily explore the mundane and secret worlds, with characters accessing the invisible world with Pierce the Veil. Characters who reach 7th level also learn how to access the invisible world directly, learning how to access the invisible city through various doors and gates. Then we have legendary level of play, between levels 8 to 14. At this level of play, characters are no strangers to the invisible world and have made one or more trips there. 
These characters have probably heard of the other domains that populate the hidden places between the known worlds, sandwiched in dimensional pockets between any number of shadowy realms. Then we have mythic level play, ranging from levels 15 to 21. This is the highest level of play planned for this edition of Bloodlines and Black Magic. At this level of play, characters gain access to powers and abilities that would appear prophetic and miraculous to someone in the mundane world, while still impressing the several supernatural beings and goetic spirits in the invisible world. This mythic level is at the heart of the truly weird. Mythic characters who achieve these levels sometimes become sovereigns and travelers. Who are sovereigns? Sovereigns are the world's most powerful people. While some of these individuals inherit this power, many spend decades pursuing it. The lucky ones find this through their arcana, although others find it in a passion, a song, or by accidentally slipping down the stairs in Havana at sundown on a Sunday evening at El Domino's. These individuals represent the royalty of the realms. And who are the travelers? Travelers are powerful explorers. They walk between these strange angles, seeking strange and weird places in the invisible world. For travelers, the experience and the discoveries that await are everything. While they have an arguably higher mortality rate, they are also the figures in history we might meet in death. These individuals seek the wine-colored skies of distant realms and frequently enter realms where only the dead go. Travelers know how to get to places known only to the Archons, their servants, and the very eldest Goetic spirits. Now let's talk about the class die. This edition of Bloodlines and Black Magic introduces a game mechanic called the class die. Where other D20 games use proficiency modifiers, Bloodlines and Black Magic uses a class die. This is used to determine how well you perform actions related to your class, such as attacking someone with a spell, aiding an ally, or when activating the Pierce the Veil ability. Likewise, each of the classes uses their class die in one or more unique class-specific ways. When a class die is called for in a roll, the player character rolls the die appropriate for their current class and level. Player characters who have a second character class roll the higher of the two dice, adding a bonus to all rolls to represent the second class. Class dice progress in three speeds, slow, average, and fast. When it comes to your class skill bonus, this is a game mechanic that works in tandem with the class die. Where the class die is used as part of player-initiated actions, the class skill bonus is used when calculating passive or reactive traits related to your class. As such, the class skill bonus is used when calculating your saving throws, class skills, and similar class-specific abilities. Concerning class die versus class skill bonus, unlike games that use a proficiency bonus for skills, attacks, saving throws, and other class-related variables, Bloodlines and Black Magic divides this by usage. Active class abilities like attacks or activating Pierce the Veil use the character's class die, while passive class abilities like skills use the character's class skill bonus. While this may sound complicated, players and game masters need only remember one simple rule. Player-initiated actions generally use the class die, while responsive actions use the character's class skill bonus. When a character makes a melee or ranged attack, makes a spell attack or activates Pierce the Veil, they roll their class die. Conversely, characters making a saving throw, most class skill checks, or making passive use of a class skill will instead use their class skill bonus. Players who are accustomed to using proficiency class bonus, who prefer to pre-calculate their various actions, can always, with their game master's approval, use their class skill bonus instead. And this concludes this part of the review. As you can see, there is a lot of customization. When it comes to the characters that you can create, you have those universal bloodline abilities, and the different character classes that you can also dual class, and I really like it how each of these character classes feels quite magical, quite supernatural in its abilities, in its powers. So you never feel like, oh, I'm just playing like a grunt style of character or my character knows almost nothing about what's really going on in the magical side of the setting. 
All of the different character classes are more than equipped to deal with different dangers both in the mundane world and the invisible world, and even some realms beyond. Thank you for watching this part of the review. In the next part of this review, we are going to take a look at some of the character classes in greater detail. So once again, thank you for watching this part, and thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. See you later!